In this one we're going to look at something that I've never looked at before and that's a video head under a microscope. We've looked at them from the camera's view before. Let's take a close up look at the actual video head chips. I have a brand new VHS upper drum that we're going to look at. I also have a Betamax drum from a 2400 series that one of the heads was damaged and I changed it out and I just so happened that I've still got the, the damaged drum. So we're going to look at both of them and uh, take a look at the differences. I had a viewer in one of my other videos who was asking how video heads were constructed. And I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity to show off the microscope again. As I have a brand new video head here that we can open up and examine. As you can see, this one has never been installed. It's a forehead. It's not a hi-fi head. It's just a forehead, regular video head that's never been installed. Looks like this is from uh, January 28th, 2003 was when this one was manufactured. I believe I bought this as a spare for my time-lapse recorder when I used to record my security system was on a time-lapse machine, a 24-hour time-lapse machine, and it would burn through the heads every, you know, every six months or so. You had to change the head out six months or eight months or whatever because it was running 24 hours a day. They would wear out. Um, so I bought this replacement head, and then, of course, before I had a chance to use it, uh, I upgraded to a hard drive-based DVR. So this one's never seen any use. Now, of course, we can get some relatively good close-ups of the head here with with the, the camera itself. But I think we can get an even better close up with the microscope. So let's take a look at it. So I'm going to start the recording on the microscope itself. So I'm going to record the actual footage that you're going to be looking at is actually from the microscope itself. So the part we're looking at right here, this is the bond wires. You can see that this is a forehead design. So there's two heads on each chip. Those are the bond wires and we look at the actual head itself and that is the head. Let's see if I can focus that. There it is. Okay, so what do we have here? We have two heads sitting side by side and that's basically it. It's a coil of wire. This wrapped around. This is a ferrite type material and it's got a slight um, gap here cut right there you can see where it's glued over Let's see if we can get a different angle of it here and of course the one on the other side is exactly the same Let's see if we can get a little bit sharper focus anyway that's the video head chip as you can see there's two of them there's a piece of dust on this one try to stand the head up on end and we'll see whether we can actually see the the head gap itself I don't think we'll see the gap we'll, we'll take a look at the edge of it so I'm just going to raise the, the microscope up a bit so that I can turn the head on edge and uh, we can try to focus it here we'll bring it in a little closer but there's the edge of the of the, uh, the head I'm going to try to bring this down a little more get a, get a bit close closer up view We'll bring this right into the closest I can get it, which is, I guess, that right there. If you look closely, you can actually see the gap right there. If I can point to it without shaking it off the bench here, just, just the, just the. My steady hands really appear to shake when they're magnified, but right there, is, that's the gap. You can see it between them. That's what makes the recording. Notice the size difference. The one on the left is the EP head. It's a much narrower track. You can see it there versus the one on the right. And if you look closely, you can see the angle.
When we look at the other surface of the upper drum, you'll see that there are slots cut in it. And what those slots are for, and even the surface down here is is not smooth. It's got grooves cut in it. These are all done intentionally. So what this does is at the microscopic um, level, air molecules are drawn in, drawn around with the spinning drum, which helps move the tape as it's spinning. It really was an engineering marvel when you stop to think about it. Recording video onto magnetic tape with a spinning head drum. I don't know if we can get a look at the top side, if we can get the, the camera in here close enough to see what the, the top of the head chip looks like. There's the top side. And you can see the gap right on the inner edges here. If you look right here, that's the gap. And these are cut at different angles. One is at uh, 6 degrees, there's a 7. I think the 7 for VHS and 6 for beta, if I'm not mistaken. But one's at plus 6 and one's at minus 6. Because one of these is an SP head and the other is an EP head. Now this machine being a machine that's designed for security use, yeah, you can see the, you can see the difference in the in the the width of the gap right there. The the one closer to the bottom of the screen, you can definitely see that that gap here is this one. Is the one on the bottom is actually that's the SP head. You can see it's thicker than the one on the top. You can see where the wires go around. You can see the the, the glue that's in there. They fill it with epoxy. But one of them is one of them is uh, one bigger than the other. I'll take you another, see if we can get another look here. One of them is a 22 micron head and the other is a 68. Show the lighting down to it a little different. See if we can see it better, but it's probably the best shot I can get there. To show the two different heads from this angle. There you can see it. I think you can probably see the difference in the width on the two gaps between the one on the left and the one on the right. Actually from this angle it looks like the one on the right is the EP head. It's a little skinnier you see. That's what draws the video track. That little small gap there. Anyway, I thought maybe you guys might be interested in seeing what the video head looks like. Now, I'm going to see if I can find a broken one, a worn head, and see if we can spot the differences between a, a new and a worn. So this is the Betamax drum. Uh, Betacam used the same size as well, but Betacam used a, an upper cylinder that was like full, spinning the whole entire top spun. Um, the original Betamax used this a center disc that spun and then they reduced it to this smaller center disc because it did not require eccentricity. And this is what the, the SL2000 series, like 2000, 2500, 2700, 2400, all those use this. Let's take a look at this one under the microscope. But as you can see, the physical size of a Beta head was larger than a VHS head by a fair bit. And that is one of the reasons why Betamax always had a better picture, is because the tape is wrapped around the head drum, and the larger circumference meant more tape was wrapped around it, and given that the speed that it's spinning is the same, you end up with a higher writing speed, because more tape is wrapped around the drum. Now, of course, the same is not said for 8mm, because it's a smaller drum, but it's a different type of tape. So let's take a look at this one under the microscope. 
we'll bring the microscope into focus and we'll take a look at the head chips on this one. So let me start the microscope recording. There we go. Okay. Let's uh, first of all let's focus it on the head chip. I should get a better look at these ones because they are uh, exposed. So if I lower down the microscope, I can bring this into sharp focus and we can look right at the head chip itself. So this is the Betamax head drum. That's one head that you're looking at. We'll look at the other one as well. I don't think these are broken actually. Oh yeah, I think that one's broken there, there's a chip in it. This is only a two head machine. Look at one side, right, you see that? There's the head gap. If we look at the other side, there's a chunk missing out of it. Right there. This head is shot. You can see it on the microscope, clear as day. There's a big piece missing right here. That's what the problem with this one is, you see? It's a big piece of the head. The gap is missing. Almost looks like two heads there, but it's not. It's a single head. We'll flip it over and we'll take a look at the other side. Here's the good side. As you can see, that's how it's supposed to look. The head chip itself is just glued in place with a piece of epoxy that holds the chip onto the base. And here are the coils of wire. If you look at the bad side, here's the bad side. Yeah, it's it's worn. It's actually a piece missing. You can see the chip right there. Oh, not only is it chipped, it's also broken. Somebody cleaned this probably with a Q-tip. The video heads themselves will, will stain quite a bit of, of pressure side to side because that's the way that they run. They, they go this way, right? The, the, the head spins and they can take quite a bit of abuse side to side. It won't move. But they are not very good for vertical. If you press up or press down, as you can see, look at that, the head will actually flex. And this one here has been damaged. That's the good side. You can see the gap there. And on this one here again, it's got a big chunk missing. Plus the fact that when I just even so much as touch it, the whole thing moves. Still have any strength ladder wise but it doesn't fall you see it's been damaged but anyway i figured i would show you guys a good versus a damaged head we'll stand it up on end and take a look at it this way obviously this is the broken side throw some different light in there so you can get a good shot of that and i'm staying on the microscope camera i'm just recording the audio on the other one just so that i have continuity so i can talk there's a there's the big gap in this one this got a new inspection port oops just about drop the microscope on it don't do that but you can see the, the break it was pretty violent So I changed this head. This is one I changed I don't know, a year or so ago and I had a, a scrap machine that I had robbed the regulator out of fix one of my own and I grabbed the head out of it and got somebody else's machine going. Sold them the, the head. And there's the good side. Anyway, um, I didn't want this to go on too long but I figured some of you might be interested in seeing what video heads look like up close and personal. That's what uh, played back your favorite shows. Just a couple just a coil of wire basically and uh, a little thin strip of ferrite glued down to a brass they use brass so because it's not magnetic so the the black portion here is the magnet that's that's the electromagnet that makes up the head that's what picks up the signal into that video head into that coil of wire the base of it here is I think it's brass it's made out of it's because it's not magnetic. Same with the aluminum disc, it's not magnetic.
And by ferrite, I mean iron. It's a sliver of iron. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, some of you found this uh, up close and personal look at uh, both a VHS and a beta video head interesting. And we will uh, catch you in the next one. Bye.